You're listening to Arty Tube, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. This is Tete Schlich and today we dive into the deep and unknown, exciting ocean of the creative mind together with Pat Kwangudelik Abbott and uh, hi Pat. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> It's already the second the second episode and uh, we had last time more than 30 minutes. Uh, um, um, yeah, we'll probably run over this time as well. I can talk, it's got to be said. <laughs> <laughs> But it was great. It was really great. So, so dear guys, go go back and, and, and you learn you learn a lot lot about Pat's life and and his growing up um, in, in in Yorkshire was it in Yorkshire or yeah yeah it's in, Yorkshire. In, in Yorkshire it's South Yorkshire in so uh, the Yorkshire is these days split into several parts but the bit I'm from is the south part uh, we always consider people from North Yorkshire to be a bit posh and really? people from West Yorkshire that's like that's would be Leeds and Halifax and all of the all of that area But South Yorkshire is kind of the bit that's kind of just up from Nottingham and close to the Pennines. So yeah. All right, from South Yorkshire, and and he, he it was really interesting, so because he he told us a lot about the background of of brass brands in in South Yorkshire and and coal mines and all that. Yeah, and how political that is. And yeah. how political that is. Yeah. <laughs> so so I really forgot forgot completely about the time but never mind you see that's 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 where i'm gonna do the podcast there's no producer behind me that's oh you have to finish it now no, no, no. yeah if, yeah, if yeah. it's if it's good and if we like it we're gonna do it that's the way great uh i would say it's just just continue uh in in, in a second part with with, with this press band and 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 coal mine things and um and You guys, you can look already in the description in the last podcast, where I'm gonna put the link from 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 films or from. You mentioned the film last time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The film is called Brassed Off, and it's basically a film that was made in the. It's probably noughties. I don't know, uh, but it's basically it's about it's about that culture, and about the minor strike from the perspective of the brass bands. Because that's a big part of that culture. Like it's very interesting. That's so great. brass bands were big in where I was from, and I mean also like everybody in the eighties was in a band because like we were all sat on our hands, not able to get work. So of course you're gonna, you know, I, I you know, I just remember sure. sitting in the pub and like there's like one band on one one chair, like on one yeah. table, and, one, and like we're all mm -hmm. hated each mm -hmm. other and we're competitive and all the rest of it. Mm. And like the band I was in in that stage would have been the Filth Sisters. I'd done various other bands before that, but we would have been had a brass section, which wasn't normal at the time. Okay. I mean, most people were punk, straight punk stuff. Uh, sure, sure. And at that stage, we were doing kind of a little bit of R and B or Crossover. soul crossed with. It was probably a. It was still punk. It was still quite fast. It was you know still super energetic but we did involve a brass section so yeah even from the band i was in in the 80s in the uk that yeah. was the case and then as i said i came over to ireland to record an album liked it here and stuck it out yeah. um but i would like to still go back because we, we, we just finished uh, the first podcast in the middle of 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 somewhere in in England, yeah. And I was wondering because you, you mentioned your mother is a dancer, yeah, or mo was a dancer, yeah. So, 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 is is she still alive or? No, she's died now. I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. My my, my mother too. So so. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. 
That's yeah. You know. That's the way, isn't it? I mean, well, you know, like we'd all like to. We 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 keep going because we ignore the inevitable yeah. approach of death. If we were just worrying the whole time about when we're going to die, yeah, we'd get nothing done. So yeah. we just have to ignore that and keep going. I think S somehow or. Or, or embrace it like the Mexicans yeah. do, you know. Yeah, and no, say, well, look, th it is a part of, yeah, of, yeah. of totally of life, and and give a little bit space for other people again. Then, you yeah. Know? So, so, but, but I I agree with you. I mean, it's 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 somehow sometimes. <laughs> no, we we have to we have to pretend like we're never going to die, and just that everything is going to keep going, and that like you know because we're like, so civilized, because we're you know like yeah. because kind of that's how we keep. Going, I mean, like we can't. Yeah, no, no, and and I think it, it doesn't make sense if if you if you think always 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 in 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 the in the in, in the was it a microcosm or a microcosm? Yeah. I mean, if if I would think all the times about that that I'm just uh, uh, being being formed by molecules. Mm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I probably would just stay in bed and. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> totally, let totally. let my molecules work, you know. <laughs> No, this is it. This is it. It's uh, yeah. No, if you actually think like how fragile we actually are, and how little time we've got in the continuum of the um, enormity of of the cosmos, yeah. like yeah, yeah if yeah. we if we actually dealt with how unimportant we are to the universe, like yeah, yeah, it, yeah. we we need a certain amount of. Yeah. Like me, 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 ego, ego, ego. Let's look, look how important I am, and like you know, like I mean, you need to do that to some extent I to mean, keep going. I like, I like my research in in in, in neuro, neuroscience and uh, um, competition and cooperation is so close in, in your head, you know. So that mm. that, that uh, I think we humans we we really can't get rid of 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 this confusion, you know. It's always a part, and and I think as well, it's, it's what 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 is good is always to keep a discourse going, and 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 trying to 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 embrace democracy. It's not easy, mm. but 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 uh, uh, I always say, guys. I mean, because friends of mine they say, ah, there, there is no democracy anymore. I say, guys, yeah, I know, I know. It, we we all we live in a crazy democracy, but it's still necessary to keep the discourse going because. Um, uh, I think I think I think the important thing to me personally mm. is that I am working in an art form where you need more than one person to make it happen. It's like you can record uh, stuff on your own and I have but I think the most interesting music happens when mm. it's a conversation between yeah. more than one person. Yeah. And like the great thing, the great thing about Quangadelic is that we have a horn section. We have more than yeah. like we have more than one chord instrument. We yeah. have like percussion. We have a lot of different people, lot of different people singing. Yeah. And in order to make the whole thing work, it's a cooperative you, effort. You have to step back a little bit as 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 ego. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I think the reason that a lot of the music I'm making now is better than the music I was making back a while, is because I came through a band with a control freak where you had to, you know, do exactly what you were told. Uh, and like, that's kind of what how, various people- How long done. does that work? And, and I mean, the point is you have to let people do what they do and trust them. Yeah, absolutely. In order absolutely. to make it oh, work. Oh, no, oh, I agree with you completely. But I think some people, they, 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 are, they have such a sadistical, element in, in themselves that 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 they love it to to to, to get told what you, what what you have to do you know no sometimes it's better i mean some of the best like some of the music i like the best is like i really like captain beefheart yeah now captain beefheart didn't let anybody in the band put a note in that he hadn't yeah you know so I, and it was all coming from his head and he was like, you know, the benevolent dictator. Well, not so benevolent because I don't think he actually paid all those guys what they were worth ever. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you like listen yeah. to the stories about it, yeah. you know, it wasn't good. And and it's kind of like I'm kind of more interested in allowing people the space to be able to it put is themselves nice. into I mean, it. It is nice because because it's 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 some it's still it's always it's still an adventure, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you get you get excited if you want to get excited. You have to 
No, you never know. You know, no, you never know who's going to show up at a Quangadelic gig because there's so many of us. And the reason we did it that way is because therefore we can work with people who are busy playing with a lot of other bands. Yeah. And then you're still going to manage to find a couple of horn players, yeah. even if Ollie's busy playing with another band and like, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? It's no. kind of, it but, works but in that way. But Quango Delic is still in the next part. We're, we're still, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're, still, we're still in the first part. Actually, the second half of the first I'm part. I'm dragging us all over the place. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, so at the moment, we're talking about what? Still, it, uh, I was still interested in in uh, in the influence from 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 your mother as a dancer because yeah. as a dancer, she probably was listened as well to music and probably to different music than your father, didn't she? Yeah, she would have. Yeah, I mean, my dad was really into the classical stuff. Yeah. Mum would have quietly dumped I mean I don't think I think the influence from mum was less to do with what music she was actually list, getting us to listen to it was more to do with what music's for yeah because the phil philosophical side because like I like a lot of the stuff that I've done over the years has been for dancing to Sure. rather than yeah. sitting down and listening to absolutely or rather than in order to get a message over mm -hmm. or in order to you know what i mean it's like different musics are for different things mm -hmm. and because they're for different things they work in different ways yeah. so like say samba music is definitely a particular it's to do with the dance moves absolutely you know yeah it's like you have to do things in a particular yeah, way so yeah. people can do a particular dance yeah you know what i mean yeah and it's got to be at a particular tempo it's very so you can dance to it. as well yeah exactly yeah. and dance music is very about being at a particular speed so people can dance a particular getting, way getting to it trance somehow. yeah exactly mm -hmm. and i mean i would have gone through Later on, I would have gone through a lot of hip hop. I would have gone through a lot of like. Obviously, I was around when the initial. I was DJing in the UK. Yeah. When the initial acid house stuff kicked off. Okay. And when all that culture happened. Yeah. And where that was that was in the eighties, no. That would be in the eighties. Yeah. Middle eighties, no. It's kind of late eighties. Like well, okay, late, when uh, yeah, when it happened in the uh, like. Okay, there was a sh there was a nightclub in Sheffield called Jive Turkey, mm. which was downstairs at the Sheffield City Hall, mm. where the they were playing a certain amount of like, okay, so like also we've mm. got to we got to t address Northern Soul. Okay, mm. there is a massive dance scene in Sheffield in the north of England of which is to do with Northern Soul, okay. which is to do with soul music of a very specific uh, type, uh, uh, of a very specific speed that people were dancing to and taking drugs to yeah. way before Acid House happened. Yeah, okay. So like Jive Turkey oh, was kind of somewhat, they were playing a certain amount of Northern Soul. Mm. They were playing an awful lot of what we now think of as kind of industrial or, you know, like, electronic music like, from like, that like, like ministry yeah before yeah that style yeah. would have been it also played at that nightclub oh. and then once acid house was happening they were playing acid house at that mm -hmm. then the high sienda happened in manchester and acid house kicked off in the north mm. with 808 state and a guy called gerald and all of that stuff And I would have been around when all of that happened. Yeah. When DJs went from being, uh, you know, like comical and about the and about talking and about being a personality, from that into being able to mix dance, mute tunes together and all of that. Mm -hmm. I remember all of that stuff happening as well, and it was a really interesting period of I time, as you that. well remember yourself, yeah. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And like. I was never so in, in into this industrial stuff too much. I mean, I was DJ as well, but but I was more direction Chaka Khan, Retro Chili Peppers, and all that, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I kind of remember going to see Test Department and uh, like at the height of the minor strike, I was in Liverpool University and Test yeah. Department. Played. Yeah. Test Department were like Scottish industrial band, yeah. and 
it was funny because like it was Test Department played, yeah, and Billy Bragg played, ah, okay. and uh, oh, uh, and uh, and a uh, uh, a mining a uh, 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 sort of one of the a brass band from a mining village came and played wow. to raise money I mean, that's, to that's, raise money for the fund. I'm you know? sure, why not? And it, they all, yeah, I mean, and, and it all clashed together. We did events like this in Germany as well, yeah, so, so, so yeah, but, but not. I mean, I must say, I have to admit, I think. Uh, Except the brass band, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 know, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But but a, mi a mix between uh, yeah. between hard rockers and 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 folks, yeah, was not a problem. You know, so. I mean, industrial was effectively they were all goths, really. You know, yeah, and they were using electronics and drum machines within mm -hmm. what they were doing. I mean, like you know, like you got an awful lot of that type of music was happening. Like from the point of view of like goth bands were massive in the north of England. Like New Model Army were from around the corner from me. Like further north, they were close to Leeds. They were from Jewsbury, I think. But like there was a lot of that style of music was happening when I was coming up. Mm. Like the goth and the drum machine thing was, and like the way the drums changed, the sound of drums changed with prints and with drum machines yeah, I know, and with yeah. all of that music. I was trying as well, one, one, one attempt where, where, where we had a two, two, uh, two members band yeah, with yeah. a drum machine. I was singing and I get, had a guitar player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah. chaotic. We did just one gig, but it was great. great yeah, 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 yeah. No, there were a load of bands that were using drum machines because I mean, yeah. like it was kind of like uh, the Sisters of Mercy. They were sure. that was a drum machine. Sure, the, there was a band called the Three Johns doing the round at about I the don't same know time. Them. Saw them; they were using drum machine. Yeah, it was like you know, there was Three Johns and a drum machine. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, it was unbelievable, wasn't it? I, yeah, I mean, no, I, I, new New Model Army and Sisters of Mercy that they they were really great. I still have them, and I'm mad. And it was actually. Because, I mean, at the time, I was kind of DJing in a club in, in in Rotherham where, like, most of the crowd were goths. Yeah. And, like, I was, like, playing that stuff and buying that stuff because I needed to play it for the crowd rather than because I liked it, you know? Yeah. And, like, that was fine. And, yeah. I, you know, I was playing a lot of punk stuff. And, and Did you probably never had, and, had, had a special direction, didn't you? I mean... I, well, I, when I came over to Ireland, I reinvented myself as like funk and acid well, jazz and like where, that type okay, of stuff where we're we gonna come in the next part you so, know so like that's kind of that's when you got to be able but like at this stage i'm playing quite a lot it was like a lot of punk a lot of goth stuff yeah but also like yeah. Like, I remember playing Fuck the Police by NWA when that came out. Yeah. You know? And, like, that was coming from... Because early hip-hop stuff was coming from the same place as but, punk. But, but so I'm, I'm, I'm still interested. So, 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 so you, your mother, was she still working as a dancer? At, and She'd stopped dancing by the time she married my dad. And, and uh, So she, she did... Okay, her career would have been... She came from, from Cuba... She was in a dance. She was dancing in Cuba. Yeah, and she was like being taught by people who, who were left behind by the Bolshoi Ballet in Cuba. Yeah, so she was taught by like Russians are, in, yeah, to right. do ballet. So, so it was so, she was a classical dancer. So she's classically trained. Oh, okay, came over to dance. Like came over to train with Rambert in London. Yeah, in the fifties, I guess. Yeah. And then she just got too tall to be able to get... A, really? She was too tall for the corps cor de ballet. Okay. So she ended up going over to I Holland. One, one meter 65 is, is somehow ballet dancers now. Well, at that stage, yeah. in the 50s, yeah. it's, you had to be a particular size yeah. to be able to be in the corps de ballet because mm. they all had to be the same shape. And mum got a little bit too hippie and to, a bit to too save, To save money in the tall. hotel room. Yeah. yeah, so she went off and did commercial dance. And uh, she was working in cabaret stuff in Holland. Did she? Yeah. Okay. So she went over to Holland, worked as, a, like, in... Okay, the, the crowd that she was working with at the time, it was these two Jewish comedians who were, like, getting people out of, like, during the Second World War, were getting people out through Holland. Who, who was it? it can, I can can't remember, remember their names, it, I'm afraid. I've got, it was not Django Edwards. It could well have been. I don't the, know. the clown? 
He wasn't. No, they weren't clowns. They were two comedians. They were doing kind of. So I mean, like, he was comedian. He was. Yeah. He was singing, and he had as well his band. Right. And they used to play in the El Paradiso a lot. Okay. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, most of like the show they toured. And when was it? In the seventies or what? That would have been in the like late fifties. Ah, uh, no, no, that, no, that's too. So early. it's kind of it's cabaret stuff from the fifties. No, that was too early. Yeah. yeah, and she was. There were a bunch of Eng like there were a bunch of dancers on the show. Yeah. And they were also, and like, so she toured around and did that for a few years. Yeah. So she learned a lot about, about the West, Western European culture. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, and it's weird because like there were, you know, one of the other dancers would have been like gay and like she was, sure. you know, sure. it was like, you know, at that point that wasn't, you know, yeah. advertised, yeah. but like she'd have been, I, I mean, I don't know. Sure. I wasn't around at that stage. But but she she, but she she did that she, for a while and then she, she came you. back and then she worked in 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 cabaret in Brighton for a little while. All right. After that, mm -hmm. and then she got a job working uh, as a secretary for the Church of England for a while. All right. And then she oh, married, is, uh, then she I married mean, my dad. Being a dancer like, and then working for the yeah. Church of England, that's that's uh, a that's weird. Life. Yeah, but that's how it works, you know. Like, because like you you have a very limited career as a dancer. You sure, know? I know that it stops it with thirty something like that. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. So like she would have been, she would have had me at the age of thirty, mm. and right. like, and the point was that her aunt, who would have been like one of the one of the family like my grandfather who was like uh who'd moved to cuba yeah his sister ended up marrying this guy like frank who mm. was who was living in rotherham right mm. and then her her other aunt would have been in in york mm. and like basically mum would have come to visit auntie peggy mm. in in rotherham which is how she met my dad mm. uh like and then like my dad would have like he, i i think he was a little bit fragile like ego wise so like she would have always kind of been a little bit careful not to be too you know uh, me 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 too, too dominant you know? yeah so like a lot of what i discovered about my mum would have been just in dribs and drabs while we were yeah, like sort sure, of dad sure. dad blah yeah, blah sure. blah you know what i mean yeah it comes a bit later as well isn't it i mean, I mean yeah you, you, if you think about your parents, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do that as well. So, so I start with, sure, with 20, 10, 15 years, you, you think about parents. But the older you become, the more your, 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 your um, thoughts twisting as well, you know, and mm. you, you learn as well. So, okay, so, so that was that and that and that because, because you get as well experience as an older person. Yeah. And all of a sudden you, you, you are 50, you know, and, mm. and, and you're, you're already, overcome the point where where our parents probably had the biggest problems you know mm. as well and you you, no, you, you, you kind of realize how young they were at the time you yeah know? i mean I, I see like the photograph i gave you of me and my dad like yeah. it's like, yeah it's love i love, he it. Was, I love he'd it. Have been, he'd have been in his 30s he, like he was a kid yeah. you know I mean? mad you know mad. <laughs> like the way i'm thinking now and like i'm working with people like in the band who are like the same age as my kids sure or younger i know, I know. You know? It's, and it's, it's like weird. yeah and i love working with people in different age groups sure. and like yeah, you yeah, know yeah, because everybody too. brings something yeah. to the table yeah, it's not, it's, it's necessary yeah you one needs that otherwise uh, if you're just working with people the same age you know so yeah yeah so you you stagnate somehow you know? totally totally yeah totally but so did she, did your mother did she bring some uh, um some some music in, into her marriage some records or all that and, and yeah the biggie the biggie was west side story because she would have also been after after the dance stopped and before she started yeah. doing doing um like secretarial stuff mm. she actually worked as a dance teacher in new jersey for a little while mm. so she would have seen like west side story when it was in the th in this in on broadway 50s. you know yeah. before it was the film yeah, yeah, but yeah. like that was 
that was huge. That 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 record, that. like, still, like, it's just perfect. Like West Side Story was like, you know, enormous for me. Like, yeah, I didn't realize how much it was, but like, I know every yeah. note really? of that record. Really? You, you know? see, I'm not so familiar with, with stuff like that. I mean, I'm, yeah. I I know it when I listen to it, but but I'm not into that so much. No, I mean, I'm not into Broadway at all. I'm not into like, I mean, I I since then I've listened to a lot of jazz stuff. Yeah. So like massively into Charlie Mingus and massively into I mean the, yeah all sure the early jazz the, the, stuff. The listeners, but if, like if, I'm yeah. not I'm not really into all the Broadway stuff. I mean you know? yeah, but if you listen if you listen if you listen to 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 Quang, Delic and to other stuff from from Pat, uh, you can hear that you know this yeah. this influence a lot for sure. And we're, and we're gonna bring it in the next episode. We're gonna will play a, actually already an opera a sixty minute piece. Yeah, and yeah. and there there. But we don't speak. We, we well, we'll get to that. We'll get to we, that later. We, we but like, okay, Mum would have. There were certain things that she would have played, and like, she was really into Super Tramp. So like, I got really yeah. Uh, I, and I just recorded the cover version. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. Of, of, logical, of song. logical song. You know, the other thing about Logical Song yeah. is, you know, that's like, just tell me who I am. That was like, Goldie was was adopt like he he was brought up through the care system. Goldie, the the, the, the DJ, the, 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 the drum, drum and bass, bass DJ. Yeah, he's 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 he's, he's gone the through teeth. the care system with the teeth. Yeah, like who, like his he he's kind of like that song means an awful lot to Goldie. That song, really? logical song, okay. is a song that Goldie called out as being like you know his uh, what is it? They they do this thing on Radio Four where they do like a song that you passed on from your parents and a song that means yeah. something to you. Yeah. And like, that was one of the tunes that like he said, like when he first time he heard that, oh, it, yeah. it pulled him out of it because he's I adopted. Mean, it is a great it's song. Like, it's like, it's a great it's, song, you know, but like that, that was the one that like he got from, because he didn't get anything from his parents, sure, because he was like, he was like going through the care system. He never met his dad. So in, in Industrial... He was Birmingham. He was Birmingham. Yeah. So like he would have been. He would have come up uh, in care homes, like industrial schools. No, it was. It's care homes. It's like basically he'd have gone to normal school, yeah. but like oh, he right. would have been. Okay. He wasn't. Didn't have parents. He was raised by care workers. Yeah. So it just not the same. You know. Yeah. It's so like so like that song meant a lot to him. <laughs> you know. Yeah, the logical song. I'm Weird, not... isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like, my mum was into Super Tramp. What else was, was she? she into? I mean, it was, it, it was a great band. I mean, I, I listened to an awful lot of Sailor Crew and, like, Buena Vista since. Buena Vista Social Club. I mean, she was really into that because yeah. that's her generation. It's, 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 it's a great album as well. And, yeah. And the film. So did she, did she, could she see the film? She went to see them. She went to actually see them in London. Right, Kudo. Yeah. Like the, like the actual, when they were touring. Yeah. Like she went to see them, so yeah. like she was really into all of that stuff. I can imagine that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's 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 because I mean she was because she was kind of like when she was growing up, she would have gone to a lot of the, like it was the big money was in gambling and stuff like that. So she'd have been in the same clubs as like Frank Sinatra and Moulin some Rouge. of those guys. Yeah, yeah, all of those clubs that like yeah. you know and yeah. It, so yeah, she would have remembered an awful lot of South, like so she knew a lot a, a lot of this planet of this life of this world yeah 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 totally <laughs> now there's this brilliant story that like she tells me that they they like they were living outside of havana yeah. and like just across the tracks from them was like one of the black areas yeah. and really close to them was this brothel yeah. and him her and her brother were used to like sit on the roof of the you know on the wall next yeah. to the brothel yeah. and when a guy goes in yeah. like when he comes out they yeah. chuck stuff at him and say you didn't take very long <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, you know what I mean like yeah, yeah. no mum was it's yeah great. yeah so so I was wondering so so to get in the next episode to the to Ireland yeah so you 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 grew up and you started then you you already mentioned the first part you started a little bit piano and then and then you continued with your breath thing and, yeah, yeah. and did you did you learn another instrument in, in this time well what happened is we uh okay there was a deal done with like when our dog died my dad got a dog Misty who was like 
proper like proper Labrador. Like, yeah. And the woman that bred her was hoping that Misty was going to be in Crufts and, you know. Yeah. So Misty got a little bit too long in the body, so she couldn't go to Crufts. So we got Misty when she was about a year old. Yeah. But the deal was that, like, if if we, we had to allow the breeder to breed this dog, uh, to breed Misty with a proper thoroughbred, and that she got one of the puppies. Okay. So when we had these puppies, I'd be about 16, mm. and I really wanted a drum kit. You know, mm. I wanted to be Really? Good. So when we sold those puppies, that's what bought my first drum kit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, it was thoroughbred Labrador puppies were drum kits. more 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 money than like just any old puppies you know uh, so right. that's what uh, bought my so first you, drum you kit. told me your father was an accountant so he was <laughs> very good in 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 in, in creating money yeah, yeah 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 right. so anyway that that's what bought my first drum kit was yeah. like misty's puppies and you learned on playing drums and then i taught myself to play drums and i had friends like my brother got a bass Mm. And my mate Tim was guitar, and we got stuck in yeah. at the age of I think we'd about I'd be that'd be about sixteen. Yeah. So it was like we were out of school and into sort of A levels in it, the college. Yeah. And we were playing like we were getting together, you know, once a week to to like write songs and and play. Yeah. And learn how to play our instruments, and cool. that would have been. Then out of that, when that band fell to pieces, that's when the Phil Sisters happened, which was, the Phil Sisters would have been myself, like, uh, I I went, I was on drums originally, but at this stage, I'm playing keyboards and singing. You were 18, 18, because 19. Because the singer, words. the singer left, I'd be 18. Yeah. The singer left, and I, I then jumped in on on vocals, and we got a different guy in on, on, on drums. Okay, so you had to learn the bass. So at this stage, I'm playing keyboards. All right. We had a female bass player called Jan, who was just brilliant, played fretless. Yeah. And I learned so much from Jan because women work different to men. It's like they're way better team players. If you gave Jan a bass line, she'd take a couple of notes out of it and it'd be way better. You know what I, I mean? I mean, Tina Weymouth is it's a great, like, great bass like, player. It's all about leaving space for everybody else. And, you yeah. Know, and like she taught me so much about mm. playing bass properly is not about how much you play. Yeah. It's about how much space you leave for yeah. everybody Abs else. Absolutely, I agree. You know? Yeah. And like, so we had myself and a, 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 a drummer called Andy mm. and Tim. Uh, and then we had Jan on bass and we had like... Uh, uh, Alex on saxophone, who was female, and uh, you know, yeah. So it's like half girls, half boys, yeah, yeah. And yeah. like most of the bands in town are all male, mm. you know. So like this is the sure, 80s. No, I know. It wasn't, yeah. you know, it was no. just at the point at which you mm. know Tina Weymouth was happening and the Sonic Youth were happening and women Absolutely. were coming into like it all came from Susie Quattro, you know. Really, she would have been. She would have been the first iconic female singer, like so singer was, bass was, player. She was, basically, you know, well, yeah, she yeah, was yeah, a bass yeah. player. I think, and I think, it's like everybody loved Susie Quattro. Uh, her partner was drummer, no? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, brilliant, brilliant. Like, so uh, that's interesting. So actually, so 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 Chris Franz and Antina Weymouth, they, yeah. they they came together because of of Susie Quattro and. Uh, yeah, no, I mean the reason so many so many female bass players happened in the eighties was mm. because we'd had Susie Quattro in the seventies. Go, you know? go. Yeah, yeah. So like basically, like that was the band that I had uh, at that stage. It was the Filth Sisters would have been. Was that the last band in in England? That was the last band I was in in England. Well, I mean, I played in a few other bands in England, but that was the one. The, the that last, was the, my big one the that big were one. doing my songs. So when when did you when when did you when did you leave England then? I left England at the end of eighty nine. Of eighty nine, yeah, and, and right. like landed in Ireland for nineteen ninety. So, 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 so sixty five. So I came over. 85. I came over in eighty nine to record 20, an 24 album. Twenty four years. Yeah. All right. I would say, um, but this is already for the third part. Yeah. And we uh, we we still gonna play another song from 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 Quango Delic now. Yeah. I don't know what which one is the second one we're gonna play. 
I'd say I'd say play like we play be like we're gonna play be yourself next. All I right, think. be yourself. Yeah, and, and that's that's an advice from us both probably. Yeah, yeah. Be yourself. Um, uh, before we're gonna play it, I would like to mention again um, uh, the thing about the podcast that 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 it is on on Instagram. You can follow it there on on uh, at that schlich or at attitude or at I Love Westcock Artists or you can go to Facebook and join the group I Love Westcock Artists and then you're part of the group. We are already 2,000 members and, and, and you can share art with us and, and even a discussion or whatever. So that's on Facebook. I was wondering, you, your page is Quangodelic on Facebook. Yes, right? we're Quangodelic on Facebook. Quangodelic on Facebook is Pets Band. Yep. Um, do you have an Instagram account? We've got an Instagram account, but like, there's not much happening with it. I'm not very good at Instagram, yeah. but do like us up on Instagram. We do stick posters up every now and again. It's, it's as well at Quangodelic. That's yeah? it's Quangodelic. Okay, Instagram, but but you, you guys, you you can get all this, this informations on on my uh, subscription, my podcast subscription as well. Yeah, if you want to get in contact and and even if you want to see where they play and and all that. Come, come back to, to this page and you get your infos. That's cool. Uh, on that note, I would say, Pat, thank you very much. It was really, it was so enlightening and, and, and the time was flying by again as well. <laughs> so, which we know that, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Have a great day. Yeah. Dear listeners, I hope I get you back uh, on the next Sunday to our early confession and um, yeah, be like you are, was it? Uh, be yourself. Be yourself. <laughs> it's funny because there's loads of bands have songs called "Be Yourself." Uh, sure, it's just such an obvious thing to say. I know? mean, and it's it's. But the reason it happened was I yeah. was like, we were we just finished doing some recording in the Camden Palace when it was still there. All right. And my friend had put that quote from Oscar Wilde on the wall: "Be yourself." Okay. Because everyone else is taken. So that's where it comes from. It's from actually Oscar Wilde. It's actually good that you mentioned it because I forgot to ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, dear listeners, take care and bye-bye. Be yourself. <laughs>
West Cork's first art, fashion and design podcast. Artitude, never so close again. Ah! That was too close.